Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Marcella's Way. I hope you guys enjoyed that last video, do's and don'ts of sublimation. Today's video is going to be the do's and don'ts of HTV. Now, this is very important because there are certain do's and don'ts that you don't get from the typical tutorial. So I wanted to put them all together so you guys could get to see the basics of what you should do and what you shouldn't do, because hopefully this will save you a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of supplies. The first one is a do not. Do not heat press self-adhesive vinyl, okay? Self-adhesive vinyl or removable vinyl. They are not meant to be heat pressed. So you want to make sure that when you are buying vinyl, that your vinyl says HTV, which stands for heat transfer vinyl. So make sure that when you are on Amazon or you are in craft stores that you are looking for those three letters, HTV. The next one is a do. Make sure that you are checking your heat settings before you press. Make sure that you aren't pressing things too hot or too long. You know, different vinyls have different settings. Different companies have different settings. So make sure that you are following the heat settings on the different vinyls that you're buying. This one is a do not. Do not layer HTV without some type of protection in between the layers. This is a heat resistant sheet. And you want to make sure that in between presses, so if you lay down one color, then you put this, then you lay down another color, then you put that. So make sure that you are not trying to pile them on top of each other without protecting them in between, okay? The next one is a do not. Do not mistaken cold peel vinyl for hot peel vinyl. They are two separate things. They require two separate um instructions after you press so make sure that you know when you're shopping whether it's cold peel whether it's hot peel i know on amazon it has a set of questions down below like frequently asked questions and it will say on there uh, is this cold peel is this hot peel this one is a do not also do not use a chemical to remove vinyl that will leave a smell on the garment you want to make sure that you're using a chemical that will not leave a smell. Now, sometimes people are using fingernail polish remover or acetone. That's fine if it works for you, but it would leave a smell. Now, this chemical that I use right here is called VLR, and it is a strong chemical because it removes vinyl extremely well but it does not leave a smell at all. There is no, you would never know that you used it. I don't know how the heck that happens, but when using this, it works really well and it does not leave a smell. So this video is how to remove vinyl and I show you how I use VLR and how I can get my vinyl off without a residue. So check that out. That's another do not. Now, I'm not sure if I missed any. If I missed anything, make sure you are leaving those down in the comments because I am happy to do a second video just like this one. And you guys, make sure that you go over to my website. I have a lot of shirts over there. If you're not a t-shirt maker yourself and you are just viewing just for entertainment purposes, just to see my face, if you are looking for shirts, especially for the holiday season, I have shirts over there and I have some t-shirt making items as well. So go to this website right here, www.minitingscustoms.com and make sure you are checking me out on Instagram at minitings4. If you have any questions, I always answer. As always, I have a my way so I can inspire you to have a your way.